Okay, so welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we have the following improper integral from zero over infinity. So the positive real line of capital H sub I over X plus capital H of negative I over X DX, where um, in this case, the subscript of I over X is represented as the I over X um, harmonic number. And the same thing can be said over here. It's the negative I over X harmonic number. We take those sums and then we're taking the um, improper integral over that um, the positive real line. We're actually be using the um, be going to be using the integral representation of the nth harmonic number, manipulating that, um, fix some stuff around that. And then eventually, this is actually going to turn into a, a lovely double integral. And then we're going to evaluate that double integral. We um, using some of the you know your standard. Um, integration techniques. There's actually also um, in one of the steps eventually when we come across um, further along we're gonna have to define some function as a generalization manipulate that generalization to help you know fill in the gaps and then this will eventually turn out lit nice into a um, sum and the sum you're going to see you know eventually is a well-known sum in the um, world of complex analysis well even analytic number theory, I'm sure you guys can figure out what that, what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, nothing more needs to be said. Um, there's going to be a lot of discussion that I'll have to um, list out, even the definitions including, and a lot of, you know, reasoning behind why we can do this as well. So I'm just blabbering about it too. So let's just jump right in. As mentioned, I said um, for some subscript h sub n that's defined as the nth harmonic number. And since there is a re integral representation of the harmonic number, we're going to use that and then I'll turn into a double integral. Now I'm restating this again, but it's always you know best to say it one more time just to make sure everybody's on the same page. So for the integral representation, so we're gonna recall that for um, x, I spell recall wrong, how can I miss the c in that? That for um, x not equal to one, then we have that the following um, rational function, one minus x to the power n divided by one minus x, is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared um, and then keep going all the way up to x to the power n minus 1. So let's actually take the integral of both sides with respect to x with our bounds between from 0 to 1. So here the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x to the power n divided by 1 minus x dx and then you can see that um, we're integrating each of the terms um, from our expansion over here. Integrating this from zero to one, that skips a step. You can actually just value this yourself to see to get the values I'm about to write down. We'll get one plus one half plus one over three plus one over four, keep going, so on and so forth, all the way up to um, one over n. And we've taken the sum and that actually def um, defines as the um, harmonic number, the nth harmonic number, capital H sub n. So, and then another thing to analyze is that this is actually, this um, sum converges for all real n strictly greater than negative one. And so, because if we look at the subscript i over x and a negative i over x, it has the real part of zero, so therefore we can actually use this integral and then manipulate some things there for um, within our sum of our um, integrand. So now we can get to the interesting part. So now let's actually take our sum of our um, harmonic numbers. So here we have h of i over x, add this with capital H of negative i over x. This is actually going to equal to, so we just use the um, harmonic number rep integral representation. So it's from zero to one of one subtract, um, we'll call this variable t, then to the power um, i over x, then this will be divided by one minus t dt, then just add this with the sum, so this is zero to one. Same thing, just replace the exponent with negative i over x, then divide it by one minus t dt, okay? Then we can just use the linearity and just combine the sums together. They even share the same denominator too, so it's just basically just fixing the numerator over here. Then we're gonna get that this is the integral from zero to one of two, then subtract, and then I'm gonna group this. So this will be um, t to the power capital I over X, 
um, add this with t to the power negative i um, divided by x and still divide by uh, 1 minus t dt. So let's actually fix this a little bit better. Um, specifically the our um, inside expression of t of to the power i over x and then plus t to the negative i over x. So this is where the neat part comes in. With, we're using the idea of complex analysis. Specifically the formula we're using is Euler's formula. And Euler's formula um, says that for some e to the, um, well first, yes we're going to say that but first let's actually fix this a little bit better. Um, here I'll write Euler's formula over here. I'll write Euler's formula, then I'll write this as t to the i over x. Just, re just write our um, given over here. Then if we actually fix this a little bit better, we can actually write this in terms of the exponential base. This, so in other words, this would be the same as e to the ln of t, then to the power i over x. Add this with e to the ln of t, then to the power negative i over x. If we just move the um, the exponents, this is basically because with exponents rule it's multiplication, so I could just um, switch in place. So in other words, we have that this is just e then to the power i multiplied by um, ln of t divided by x. Add this with e to the power i then multiply, or in this case negative i um, times ln of t then divided by divided by x. Okay then this is going to equal to um, 2 times cosine of ln of t divided by x. You'll notice that because um, this is actually using the definition of cosine and then just by reworking with some algebra, we can just, uh, because the definition of um, cosine of x in terms of the exponential, um, x, the exponential um, functions, is um, it's equal to e to the power i x plus e to the negative i x and then divided by 2. You just do the algebra and then replace the inputs. We're going to get this. All right. So now from there, we can actually just replace um, over here. Okay. And then I'll switch back to the, um, let me switch back to the black marker for this one. Then we're going to get our new um, rewritten integral. So then this will be, and because there's a 2 over here and a 2 over here, I'll just factor that out. Of the, out of the outside, the integral, so this is 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 subtract cosine of ln of t and divided by x and then multiply with the dt and then divide by uh, 1 minus x, like so. We're making some um, progress over here. Now we just actually integrate this both sides in respect for our, well, really in respect to x, but also with um, within the bounds from zero to infinity. Okay, so now let's switch back to over here. Now with our new integral from zero to infinity of, um, now we're writing the same integral, that's basically the given that we want to evaluate. So h then i over x plus h negative i over x dx. And so we set this equal to two times, I'll just factor out the two. So this is now our um, double integral over here from zero to infinity, then multiply with the, or well, the integral from zero to um, one, sorry, I'm kind of itching I'm over my face, of uh, one subtract cosine of ln of t divided by x, then um, this is dt and then one minus t and then dx. Now from here, um, we can actually change, let's change the order of integration. So I'll put it equals just, I know there's um, the placement's not right exactly, but just know that this is this equals denoting the next step over here. Using the order, of, changing our order of integration. So I'll put t first for our integral and then we just move the fractions around. So this will be from zero to one of one divided by one minus t. Then with the integral from zero to infinity of one minus cosine of ln of t divided by x dx or rather yeah no dx and then dt missing a parentheses over here so that's fine we want now um we want to solve the integral um specifically what integral am i talking about we want to solve this integral right here that's what we want to do first so this is where um we're gonna have to um define a little generalization of um rather a function if you want to call it to solve that integral so let's actually do that. First, solve this integral. Let's define a function. We call this f of a, okay? 
then f of a is going to equal um, the integral 0 to infinity of 1 subtract cosine of a then divided by x then dx. Now if we just use Feynman's trick or differentiate under the um, you know under the integral so then we have f prime of a is equal to 0 infinity of this will be sine of x of a divided by um, yeah no yeah a divided by x then multiply with um, dx divided by x. Okay, so now if we actually just make the change of variables, uh, let me actually write this down. Change the variables, let's switch from, in this case, we'll switch from, um, switch from x to one over x. Then we're gonna have the um, new substitution of the integral. We'll have that this is the integral from zero to infinity of um, this will be sine of a times x then divided by x dx. Okay, and then you'll see that this is a generalization of um, specifically known as the Dirichlet, the Dirichlet integral. So let's actually um, a can be well constant rather, but um, well yes it is because this is a generalization. So specifically, let's assume that um, a was is a negative number. So a strictly less than zero, all right? We know that the well-known value of, um, because sine over sine of x over x because a is positive, the well-known value is pi over two. It's also noted that um, sine of ax over x is, well, it's, a, um, it's an even function, so it's symmetric. So in other words, if we're doing this with a is less than zero, because the Dirichlet function, obviously, um, Dirichlet integrals is defined from zero to infinity of you know, the integrand. So if we just take this backwards, it's the even function where a is our negative number. This is just basically the negative of pi over two. So if, I'll say, if a is strictly less than zero, then um, f prime of a is equal to pi divided by two, or excuse me, negative pi divided by two. Now we just integrate both sides, then we're gonna get that f of a is equal to negative pi times a divided by two, then add this with c. If we let a equal zero, then, um, so a is equal zero, then c is equal, equal to zero as well. So therefore we can say that f of a is equal to the integral from zero, well, it's basically our given generalization over here. So one subtract uh, cosine of a divided by x dx is equal to negative pi times a divided by two. So let me just, um, this is not the final answer, but I just want to box this just to know that this is what our generalization um, is coming down to. And of course, you might be thinking to yourself, why do, we, why do we want to assume that a is strictly a negative number? If you notice that if we actually said a equals ln of t in this case, that's why we have a generalization, and ln of t in this case is what we're dealing with in this integral is a constant. If we let a equals, strictly, uh, a equals ln of t, notice is that because we're dealing with the bounds with the, const, with the variable t and we're integrating this between zero to one over here, between t's from between from zero is less than t is less than one. L and t is actually strictly negative. Therefore, we if we were to plug L and t back in, then this is just um, I'll put the equal signs over here denoting denoting that this is actually just equal to um, negative pi L and of t and then divided by two. All right. So now we're getting somewhere. Okay. Now I'm gonna follow up um, with this. So I'll denote the brown, so equal. So this is just a continuation now that we solved the inside integral in respect to x. So next we have, I'll write this as two, then um, the integral from zero to um, infinity of, well actually this is supposed to be from, excuse me, zero to one. Since now um, we already solved the in respect to x, so we solved the t, so the bound would have to be from zero to one. I'll write this as, in other words, this is f of ln of t then divided by one minus t dt. All right, now from there, we actually know what the um, inside integral in respect to x is, so we just plug that back in, zero to one of, let's see, so this will be one minus, or one divided by one minus t, 
fill this back in with negative um, pi times ln of t divided by 2 dt. Then you'll notice that the twos will cancel each other out. I can factor out the negative pi. So negative pi times the um, integral from 0 to 1 of ln of t divided by 1 minus t dt. Okay, you'll notice that in the denominator, um, ln of t, and then, well, specifically, I can just, we can focus on this little piece right here, one over one minus ln of t. So in other words, you can actually write this as a geometric series. So, because it, th this holds, because we're dealing, we're integrating between from zero to one, and we have this, you know, fractional function over here, so we can actually put this back as a geometric series of, okay, so this will write as ln of t first, then multiply with the, um, the infinite sum so this will be from n is equal to zero of t to the power n okay dt then it's convergence so i'll just um interchange the sign so we have negative pi then multiply with the infinite sum n is equal zero of um, the integral from zero to one of t to the power n multiplied by l on the t dt you can actually show this um i'm going to skip this step to evaluate this integral obviously you have to use integration by parts and you'll notice that um performing the calculations you're going to get into a place where um there's the um indeterminate form involved then applying L'Hopital's rule, you'll get the result. But after um, applying all this out, you're gonna get that this is just equal to, um, well, the integral specifically is supposed to equal to negative one divided by um, n plus one quantity square. So I'm gonna put that down and then we're gonna continue forward from here. Okay, so we have negative pi, then this is n is equal zero of, um, let's see, negative one divided by um, n plus one quantity square, okay then this means if I just keep going, this is um, the negatives will cancel each other out. And what I can do is I can actually re-index this. So this is pi, then multiply with the infinite sum. We have um, pi, then the infinite sum, n is equal one. Then if I put this as one divided by n square, notice that this term over here is a well-known problem known as Basil's problem, or in other words, the Riemann zeta as um, when s is equal to 2, we know that that value is actually just going to equal pi squared divided by 6. So therefore, we have pi times pi squared divided by 6. Therefore, the final answer is pi cubed divided by 6, like so. And there we have it, the final answer in the red box. And there's, um, this is actually very interesting. You know, this is the, I know this is the first time I'm dealing with harmonic number integration because I told you I actually done um, sums in the past. A couple of the videos I've actually done were harmonic infinite sums of the harmonic number. So this is a first, and this is everything that we have to um, we've actually written down, generalize um, using a bunch of um, formulas, techniques, and there we have it: pi cube divided by six of our um, sum of the harmonic numbers of the i over x and then negative i over x. So yeah, that's a pretty cool fiasco.